because I figured if they're going to do it somewhere, let's do it someplace safe. Let's do it at the church. And, and I realize that maybe I might just mess somebody's religion up. I'm sorry about that. But the last place I pastored, I had to get them wherever I could get them. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I, I take them anyway. I didn't clean them. All I did is just bring them. That's, that's the way. As a matter of fact, it went so far, we had five guys that would park their car in front of the church and just sit there and drink all night long. They cleaned up their bottles, but they just drunk all night long. And this happened to be one of them that I really didn't know, but he used to watch me on TV. He wouldn't come in the church, would sit outside the church. And it amazed me, how, how, and which at the same time I was thinking to myself, I guess my preaching didn't have that kind of impact, what everyone was thinking, because here he is. And I began to talk to him, and he was talking about how he had been drunk all night, and, but he knew that he grew up in church, and he knew that there was something inside of him that was great. So I just laid my hands on top of his head like we would do down here at the altar and began to pray, God, bring his family back together, or just break the curse of alcoholism, or redeem his life, and break the off and, and we just had a good time because I figured if the enemy was going to shout, I might as well shout too. So I just did my part. And it amazed me how that people watch your life and you don't even know it. But at the same time, I learned something that day about my dream. Is that you've got to be willing and ready wherever you are, God may call for you. And if I was waiting for someone that would have been up on a podium to tell me that I would have missed it, it took somebody drunk and halfway high on a hangover coming down for me to realize that what God was trying to tell me can come through any package. David was doing his job, tending sheep when he got a call. Wasn't even looking for the dream to come to pass, and God called him. And I just want to tell somebody today, you could be on your job and not even realize it, and God could be using you and you not even realize it. You could be in a place where you're not even looking for your dream to come to pass. You could be at a place where you're not even expecting anything to happen in church, and God has your number, he knows where you are, and he can call you at any time. Yes. But don't be discriminatory against the package that it comes in. It says in verse 18, between verse 13 and 18, that Saul, he had an evil spirit that came and tormented him. Saul was the current king in the land. Verse 18 says, Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Now, I've just got to stop here because I have a problem with this. Because the last description we read said that David was ruddy. He wasn't good to look at. He had freckles. He, was, he just wasn't the right person. Now, after David got anointed by God, something happened. It said now he's a mighty, valiant man. He's cunning and plain. He has talents. He's gifted. Isn't it amazing? Just, can somebody just raise your hand and thank God for his grace and for his anointing on your life that can take you from where you are and to where you need to be and you not even recognize it? You could keep walking the same road, just being yourself, not even realizing that, hey, somebody saw you do something that ministered to their life. It blesses me to know and understand. Here David was a shepherd boy, but his name got around the community because God said, here's somebody with a dream I've anointed and God will advertise and promote you yes. he will make your dream come to pass and you don't even have to try to add, you don't and this is one of my other pet peeves and I'm trying to, to stay out of my own opinions today but I love it and this usually happens with preachers because I'm a preacher and I know a lot of preachers you, this might happen in a different way for you but I love it when preachers walk around with their business cards saying hey pastor how you doing that kind of thing. You know, just, just giving it up. It amazes. I've never had to do that, and I'm thankful I haven't had to do that. But it amazes me because there's many people that want to promote themselves, and usually if they have a prophetic gift, they want to walk around and say, I'm a prophet. How you doing? You need a word? That kind of thing. And they'll climb up on a stage and say, I I'm just here to evangelize today because I'm the evangelist. Guess what? You can be so secure in yourself. You don't have to promote yourself. God will promote you. It amazes me, people that are so insecure, they're trying to make their dream come to pass, when in reality, if they would just step back and say, God, here I am, yeah. God will send you the right places at the right time, open the right doors, and close the wrong ones. Hey. But at the same time, if you keep walking around trying to make your own connections, not relying on God, I've always had to learn that if I make the relationship, I have to maintain it. But if I let God connect me with another dreamer that has trying to birth something like I'm trying to birth, there's nothing that can separate us because we're connected at the heart. And the entire purpose of my ministry and my life is that I can connect to people that God tells me to connect to. Because if he didn't tell me to connect to you, I can't help you. I love you. I'll pray for you. But I can't do anything for you. At the same time, we've got to be careful who we try to connect to in our own dreams. You could be locked up to somebody that's taken from you and not given anything. And God didn't ordain it. And through the process, because you did it, how are you going to get out of it? This is so off the subject. Is anybody getting anything, though? I, I hope somebody's getting something. Let's read on in chapter 
17, verse 3. At this point, David, he's been anointed for a little while. He's been in Saul's palace playing the harp, driving off evil spirits. To summarize the story, if you didn't go to Bible school, we can do that for you. We'll do that at a later time, though. At this place, we see that David is operating in his dream somewhat. He's anointed, he's playing for the king, and then a war breaks out in the land. And through the process of the war, we see in verse 3, And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. A valley between them. God's chosen on one side, the Philistines, the world on the other. Through the process of the dream, there's always going to be a battle. And that battle is going to be, are you going to be able to uh, get to the place where you're called to be? Are you going to give up in the process? And through this battle, we see that the church, Israel, God's chosen people is on one side, and there's a great space in between them and the world. And I have a problem with that. Because many churches want to stay so separate from the world, so separate from local politics and national politics, so separate from everything, well, we're so secluded because we just hear from God and nobody else does. And I have a problem with that because God did not call us to be separate. He called us to be one from among them. There's a valley. I'm looking for some space invaders, and I'm not talking about the one that's intergalactic from another planet. I'm talking about some people that realize I have a dream, and guess what? My dream is that I could help you. And through the process, whatever space I've got to walk across, I will. Whatever valley I have to cross to get some help to you, I will. I'm looking for some people that could bind together with me and say, guess what? We've got, I don't see empty seats here. I see potential for some people that are not saved to have a home. And I'm looking for some people that can invade some space in their community, invade some space in their schools, invade some space in their jobs, and help me bring some people in this place. Is there any space invaders today? I just got a whole sermon on that by itself. We'll do that another time. Verse 23. And he talked with them, and behold, there came a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Somebody say, David heard them. David heard them. The significance in that is that Goliath had came out for 40 days and 40 nights and said, guess what? None of you all can beat me. You might as well stay in your foxholes. You might as well stay way over there. We're taking over the world. There's nothing you can do about it. And no one rose up to challenge him because the enemy seemed far too great. But on this day, a dreamer was present. Yes. On this particular day, someone with passion was present. On this day, someone who had greatness locked up on the inside of them just waiting for an opportunity was present. And did you know dreamers see things differently? Dreamers hear things differently. People with vision act differently. On this day, it was different because David said, you know what? There's nobody going to talk about my God. There's no one that's going to stop me from getting to where I need to be. And I know God has called me to prominence and it's my time to rise up. And if I just had somebody that realized and identified in their life that just because the enemy seems great doesn't mean you can't overtake him. Because giants do fall. I wish somebody would just say that with me. Say giants do fall. Whatever you need. Did you know that giants do fall? Just because your job may seem like a giant because you don't have one right now. That giants do fall. It amazes me how people get intimidated by giants in their life. When in reality, if they would just step up. If they would just step up to the plate. Yes. Giants do fall. It just takes a little bit of work. There's a little bit, not even a whole lot, but it's a little bit. We see because a dreamer was here and he heard that he began to question who this enemy was. Verse 26, and David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now watch this. And the people answered him after this manner. Okay, David, he's talking just a, a little bit of trash here towards the enemy. He's saying, I'm bad and I know it. I'm anointed. God's with me. No weapon formed against me can prosper. He's quoting scripture in the sense he's excited. And it said in verse 27, and the people answered him after this manner. In other words, the people around David got stirred up because a dreamer was in their midst. And for the first time, they had a little bit of hope. And they began to talk like David did. Well, who is this giant? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this one that would come and try to defy the armies of God? Who is this that would come to talk about my church? Who is this that would stand up against my pastor? Who is this that would say that God's not real? Who is this to say that, that there's no weapon formed against me, but that they can overcome me? Who is this? 
Did you know that positive thinking is contagious? 